Hi, friends. I just wanted to jump on here and let you know there will not be a Friday video. I will see you all on Monday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. In what feels like a never-ending lawsuit battle, Harry is constantly going to court if it's not to get his security back from the home office. It's going after the newspapers or media in some way. Even though he won a small battle with the Mirror Group, he is nowhere near done with going after the media, and now he's just going further with a new case. Yes, lawyers for the Duke of Sussex and other claimants are seeking to amend their lawsuit against Murdoch British Mass Circular Papers to include Rupert Murdoch. Prince Harry and more than 40 others are suing the news group newspapers over accusations of unlawful invasions of privacy from the mid-1990s until 2006, by the Sun and the News of the World. The case is due to go to trial in January, and it could last eight weeks. In a three-day hearing starting today, lawyers for the claimants asked Judge Timothy Fancourt for permission to change the details of their generic case against the NGN to include further evidence of a cover-up by senior executives at the newspaper group. Among the amendments they are seeking to include are references to Murdoch about senior figures' knowledge and concealment of unlawful activities and evidence relating to Rebecca Brooks, the chief executive of News UK, News Corp's British newspaper arm. NGN's lawyers said the attempt to change the particulars of the case was unnecessary. They referenced introducing 200 new journalists executives, and private investigators as an example along with serious allegations. Anthony Hudson, NGN's lawyers, told the court it has become increasingly clear that at least some of the members of the claimant group appear to be using this document as a vehicle for wider campaigning interest against the tabloid press. Hudson suggested that the proposed amendments were designed by some of the claimants, including Hugh Grant, actor to turn the litigation into some type of substance for a public inquiry. In 2012, NGN apologized for widespread phone hacking by journalists at the News of the World, which Murdoch had forced to shut down during the backlash. The group has always rejected allegations of any wrongdoing by the staff at The Sun. Brooks, a former Sun editor, was found not guilty of hacking of and other crimes following an eight-month trial in 2014. David Shermorn, the lawyer for Harry and other claimants, told the court both Murdoch and Brooks knew NGN's original statement that just one rogue reporter was involved in unlawful information gathering was false. Murdoch knew about the allegations and that the company denial was untrue. Shermorn claimed, saying it would have to been been approved by News Corp's board. In written submissions, the claimant's lawyer said they want to include evidence from a former IT engineer that Brooks's computer's hard drive was driven away and possibly deliberately destroyed in 2011 to hide her knowledge of wrongdoing. NGN's lawyer said the amended details were an attempt to reinvestigate, reopen, relitigate, or second guess previous court decisions or findings from a 2012 public inquiry. Their written statement said, as observed above in relation to Brooks, these new allegations against those previously named in the case are also frequently serious and wide-ranging, requiring NGN to enter into the rerunning of a criminal trials or an inquiry into an inquiry. So basically, Harry's court cases continue. He will not stop until what he feels that he slayed the dragons of the media, in his words. This has become his only mission in life, and it's truly sad because he is a young man, and he has so many opportunities to help so many people throughout the world. But the only thing he is concerned with is somehow getting the media to bend the knee to him and only print the things that he wants them to print. I do not believe this is only about his obsession with the media because of his loss of girlfriends. I also think it is tied to the loss of his mother. 
But this really shows how mentally stunted he can be because this is his true obsession. His true obsession of bringing the media down. And in the end, he's not going to. He may win a few small court cases here and there, or he may lose completely. Either way, the media will continue and it's not going to go away. The fact that Harry has so much to offer the world in a sense of helping others, having a platform to bring awareness to charities and that help so many people around the world, the Invictus Games, the Centibali, if these charities actually got half of his attention that he gives in taking down the media, they would be amazing results for both of them. But the only thing he seems to give all of his time to is either taking down the monarchy or taking down the media. The Duchess of Edinburgh was snapped showing off her caring side as she visited a hospital in Yorkshire today. Sophie was snapped meaning two-year-old patient Astrid Walker during an engagement at the Pediatric Neurosciences Wards at Leeds Children's Hospital. She was also photographed meeting patient Brandon McGibbon and VR play specialist Lucy Dove, who was demonstrating virtual reality distraction therapy to the patients. The mother of two, who has some 70 patients, is known for her interest in and work with young people and children in need of additional care. During her visit, Sophie wore a mid-length frock with floral pink featuring white and pink blues on a gray background. The dress had a v-neck with small matching fabric covered buttons to do it up to the height she wanted it and three-quarter length sleeves. Sophie paired the garment with light blue pointed pumps with a medium stiletto heel matching the color of her shoes to the background of her dress. Meanwhile, her blonde locks were pulled up casually into a side party, then tied in a low ponytail. She kept a jewelry low-key and sticking with the theme of the outfit, wore blue earrings when made from gems crafted in the shape of flowers. Her makeup was light, showing off her impeccable complexion, and she wore a peach blush, light brown smoky eye, and a natural pink lip. Sophie's visit to the hospital today follows other engagements focused on young people this week. She and her husband, Prince Edward, attended an all-England Open Badminton Championships together. The Duchess of Edinburgh spoke with a number of staff during her visit, including the chief executive of Leeds Teaching Hospital, Professor Phil Wood, head of nursing at Leeds Children's Hospital, Laura Whelan, and ward manager, Julie Cooper. Sophie's caring motherly style really comes out when she visits children in the hospital. And it's really wonderful to see her not only respond to the young children, but the older children seem to respond to her very well, too. Whenever she goes into these hospitals, she says she remembers her children and being that age and how wonderful it was. And to see them in the hospital, it is very touching and moving. Her expressions when she's around the children is quite loving, and you can tell she's still true that mother at heart. Prince William visits Windsor's Cobermere Barracks in his role as Colonel of the Welsh Guards, chatting to soldiers and learning more about their work. 
Prince William has made a secret trip to the Army barracks today as a part of an important role he holds in one force in particular. The Prince of Wales visited Windsor Comerbeer barracks in his role as Colonel of the Regiment, chatting to soldiers and learning more about their work. It is thought the Ministry of Defense asked for his visit to be kept secret. William took on the role of Colonel after his father, King Charles, who previously held the role, became king. He last visited the Garners alongside his wife, Catherine, in March of last year as they took part in St. David's Day Parade, addressing troops and also speaking to members of the 5th Royal Australian Regiment about their role in training in Ukrainian armed forces in the UK. Before the parade began, the prince's role as colonel saw him present leaks, which feature on the cap badge of the regiment, to the officers and guardsmen. He also gave a speech to rank and file to soldiers where he said the Welsh Guards banter had helped him get through his own time in the regiment. Following his most recent visit, William posted on Twitter, As Colonel Welsh Guards, it is always a pleasure visiting the barracks to speak with the soldiers, hear plans for the future, and witness the great work the battalion does with physical and mental rehabilitation. During his speech last year, the Prince of Wales finished his speech with the group motto in Welsh, which means Welsh for Wales forever. Queen Camilla delivered a landmark speech on the Isle of Man today as she stepped up for the king amid his cancer battle. The queen was visiting the Douglas Borough Council to officially declare Douglas as an official city. The king has stepped back from public-facing duties following medical advice while he continues treatment for an undisclosed form of cancer. But senior members of the royal family have been delivering speeches written by the monarch on his behalf. Crowds gathered ahead of the visit by Queen Camilla today as roads were blocked off from the early morning in preparation for the royal visit. Children were pictured waiting eagerly for the Queen's arrival and waving Union Jack flags. The Queen looked elegant in her formal outing today in a long loose skirt and matching coat with a sapphire brooch. Queen Camilla wore her hair down with matching blue earrings and her signature knee-high black boots. During a ceremony, the Queen signed a letter patent which confirms city status on the borough of Douglas. Douglas is one of the eight places that are receiving the honors as part of Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee celebrations in May of 2022. The Queen met with Mayor Douglas Natalie Byron Tier and Council Leader Claire Wells during her visit. Afterwards, Camilla unveiled a commemorative plaque outside of the building and moved on to greet the crowds outside. In one picture, the Queen waves into a camera as a member of the public leans over the rail to try and get a selfie with her. The Queen then moved on to the government house in Anshan to meet representatives from the RNLI and the Mannix Blue Tits Swimming Club and community groups. The island lieutenant governor, Sir John Lorimar, and his wife, Lady Philippa Lorimar, live in the government house. King Charles has visited the Island of Man on three occasions, but his last visit was in 2012 as the Prince of Wales, accompanied by Camilla. In 2022, King Charles was proclaimed Lord of Man during a ceremony that took place on the Isle of Man. Sir John Lorimar read the proclamation at Government House in Anshan on September 11, 2022. The role was held by the late Queen Elizabeth II for 70 years until her death a few days prior. Queen Camilla continues to step up and perform royal duties solo on behalf of her husband, the king. Queen Camilla is really doing a wonderful job for King Charles during his downtime for his medical procedures. The crowds are really showing up and they're very excited to see her. Sometimes the media tries to tamp down the response that the public has when it comes to Queen Camilla because of the past. But people are really embracing her, and they really are falling in love with her, really. And when she does things like this, going in, she loves to mingle with the crowds, and they love to just really get in and speak with her on a personal level. The one thing you could say about Queen Camilla is she's very personable, and she is the type of person that will walk right up to anyone and just start in on a conversation. They feel welcomed and they really enjoy it. This one photo of her talking to these women with their small children 
is just adorable because she is a grandmother herself and she understands the love of a child and it's just absolutely adorable as far as I am concerned. My husband is so sorry that he cannot be with us today on this extremely special occasion. But he sent me here after the copy of his speech to read out his part. We actually have signatures from the guest speech from all of us who have visited oh. City Hall. We can call it City Hall. Yes, City Hall. Hall. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.